Caterpillar's Count is a citizen science project for measuring the seasonal variation, also known as phenology, and abundance of arthropods like caterpillars, beetles, and spiders found on the foliage of trees and shrubs. You may be wondering what citizen science is. To answer your question, it is scientific research and data collection done by members of the general public, that is, non- or amateur scientists. You may wonder about the accuracy of such projects. But in the case of Caterpillar's Count, all submissions, especially those with photos, are reviewed by experts and eventually used to measure seasonal timing of the food resources for forest-dwelling birds. This is the Brookbanks Park site that I've had the privilege of surveying this summer. As you can see, despite only being a few weeks into the summer, there is plenty of insect life to encounter. For caterpillar count specifically, to get involved, you'll need to either find a site near you or set up one of your own. To learn more about this aspect, we recommend going to the caterpillar count website to learn more about this process. To begin surveying specifically, the materials you need depend on the method you choose. This is the beach sheet method in action. As you can see, the individual in this clip has come up, chosen a branch at a site tree, and hits it firmly 10 times before looking to see what has fallen. Following this clip, we will run through it step by step so it is easier to understand. First, choose a suitable branch one that has a good amount of leaves and would be easy to resurvey. Then, what you'd like to do is place the beet sheet below the branch and hit the branch with a good amount of force 10 times. You may be unclear on what a good amount of force is for this activity. Ideally, you want to hit the branch with enough force to knock all of the arthropods off the branch and the leaves and into the beet sheet, but not too hard that you damage the tree too soft and none of the arthropods will be knocked off and you will report inaccurate data. When it comes to measuring and categorizing the different arthropods that you find, you can do it one of two ways. The first method is directly entering it into the Caterpillar's Count app, as shown here. As you can see, you first input the code and method. Then, you decide if you found any arthropods, and you input them there. These are the categories. For caterpillars specifically, there are a couple more options in this section that I could use them. The length is inputted in millimeters, and it's heavily recommended that you upload a picture of the caterpillars that you find. You can upload them either from the camera or the library. Much like the previous survey method, for the second survey method, you also need to find a suitable branch. For step two, you're going to want to examine each leaf carefully, because a lot of the arthropods are very adept at camouflage. Step 3 is to measure the arthropod. Much like the previous method, the aim is to measure the arthropod lengthwise, as you can see in this video. Make sure to take into account the position and shape of the arthropod when measuring. Collected data can be reported directly into a caterpillar's count app as shown previously, or can be written down and reported later. Step 4 is recording the details of the plant that you are surveying. This entails counting the number of leaves on the plant, as well as measuring the average of the leaves on the branch to the nearest centimeter. Again, this can be recorded and input into the app later. This is the plant information section of the Caterpillar's Count app. 
When surveying, you can see that the plant species, number of leaves, average leaf length, and herbivory score are all important sections. Here, you can input the number of leaves, as well as the average leaf length in centimeters. Additionally, the herbivory score is how much of the leaves have been consumed by arthropods. The options under herbivory score are none, trace, light, moderate, and heavy. An easy method for estimating herbivory score is to look up through the branch that you are surveying and seeing where the light filters through on the leaf. Once you have finished inputting your data, make sure to press finish and that you receive confirmation on your screen. You should be brought back to the initial page where you would enter the new code. A simple way to assure that all your photos have been uploaded to Caterpillar account is to periodically check on the Manage My Survey page on the website. Getting involved in Caterpillar's account is extremely easy. You can set up a site or find one that already exists and conduct surveys there. Caterpillar's account website, there are also plenty of resources, such as training materials, resources on data collection, data review and exploration, and for education. Getting started, training participants, and education skill building are all resources you can find on the website. You can also find resources on how to build a beat sheet, which can be extremely useful as it is a super effective way to conduct surveys. You can also find out how to manage your surveys and explore data tools. Caterpillar's count sites are often managed by local organizations, and one of those local organizations that manages a Caterpillar's count site here in Ontario is EcoSpark. EcoSpark is involved in a variety of programs that work with primarily students to involve them in community-driven science. Caterpillar's count with EcoSpark is currently undergoing expansion to seek more community involvement. However, EcoSpark also has a variety of other programs that are great for entering into citizen science. There are many other programs and ways to get involved with EcoSpark if you are interested. Both Caterpillar's Count and EcoSpark's website will be linked at the end of this video. We definitely recommend subscribing to EcoSpark's newsletter and seeing how you can get involved in citizen science in your community.